from our vantage point here in Texas, much, much hazier. Why don't we take a look at the trajectories and see where this air mass came from. Well, there it is going back seven days. This is showing mostly a Canadian trajectory, moving down to the Gulf and then recurving. However, it looks like maybe we have ingested a bit of air from the Midwest, and that can be a very potent source of sulfates and nitrates. I also wonder about that dust that got picked up in West Texas back on Saturday. Could that have recirculated back in here? Well, here's the computed GFS forward trajectories from the dust storm event Saturday, and this is telling me that the dust probably got carried down to the Gulf Coast and South Texas and Northeast Mexico, and it sat down there for a couple days. And I think now that we're starting to get that southerly flow, it's probably advecting northward. So to me, that's the most likely explanation. The surface analysis for this afternoon shows a very stagnant pattern across the eastern U.S. We've still got that high pressure area from the Great Lakes down to the Louisiana, Mississippi region. And that just represents the slowly modifying, dissipating cold air across the eastern part of the U.S. We do still have fresh cold air advection in the northeast states, still seeing 20s there with clouds and snow. In Texas, the moisture is making a return. Dew points are coming up into the 50s and temperatures are rising up to the 70s. However, we have not had enough moisture return to develop a dry line just yet in South Texas. Then turning our sights west into the north, we've got an active Pacific system moving through Nevada, California, and Utah. There it is right there. And you can see the cooler temperatures behind it with clouds and rain and a characteristic anafront setup. It looks like the eastern periphery of that is carried out through the plains as this warm front. And you can see that the temperatures range from 63 at Kansas down to the 30s in Nebraska. In the northern plains, we're starting to see the leading edge of that Arctic air mass. I'm still carrying that as a continental polar air mass because it's not particularly cold. Temperatures still in the teens and 20s up there, but we are expecting much colder air to be filtering in over the next few days. So this is the start of the southward advance of the cold polar air. And we take a look up in the Arctic and we do see temperatures have been falling once again. We have this widespread area of minus 30 degree temperatures and we're starting to see a lot of minus 40s starting to appear in many different places. And the coldest that I'm seeing, minus 46 there in northern Victoria Island. Yeah, there's even some more right there, minus 45. So we are definitely seeing one of the coldest days so far this winter in the northern Canadian Arctic. And along with that, we're seeing increasing pressures in the western Arctic and a northerly component to the flow as that density current starts surging southward. In California and Nevada, we have a cold front working through that area. There's the northwesterly winds flowing right down the San Joaquin Valley and northwesterly winds at Bishop and Tonopah. Out ahead of the front, you can see the southwesterly flow. That's very characteristic of conditions ahead of the front with dry dew points and warm temperatures. So the front is pretty much about right there. There's the visible satellite imagery. We're looking for the front to be kind of right in this area. And you can see right around Bakersfield, there's some upslope flow where stratus has been pushed up against the foothills. Definitely some mountain waves if we pan north. You can see those up there in central Nevada. That rippled appearance in the flow. And standing lenticular clouds around Death Valley up to Bishop. And this is being caused by very fast flow across the Sierra Nevadas. The water vapor imagery is showing not much structure to that frontal system. However, it does paint out a trough across central California into the Pacific. 
But out there to the east where we have that jet stream impinging on the Sierra Nevadas, some very prominent mountain wave activity, and we can zoom that in just a little bit. There it is, and it even looks like right there in the lee side of the Sierra Nevadas, a little pocket of extremely dry air where there's very strong subsidence. In Texas, we're starting to bring that tropical moisture northward. You can see it making landfall there around Victoria, Galveston, and Houston, but much of the rest of the state remaining fair, except for these high cirrus clouds. In the central plains, still showing quite a bit of snow up there in Nebraska and northern Kansas, and that's probably responsible for some of the temperature deficits in that area. West of the Front Range, lots of clouds, and that's indicating that we're starting to get west of the ridge. Ridge axis probably right around here, and out to the west of that, we're getting the height falls and increasing humidity. And certainly some mountain wave activity down around Trinidad and Walsenburg. Going into the northern plains, things are dominated by a lot of mid and high clouds, mostly flowing from west to east. But underneath we can see a layer of stratus and stratocumulus. This is associated with the cold front that is moving southward. There's some of that snow cover in the Midwest, and of course it is fixing to get pretty cold here in a few days. And in the Northeast U.S., a lot of cold air advection stratocumulus still hanging on, but where we have clearing out to the west, we can see some of that snow that came through that area over the past few days. And a spectacular little vortex there off of Cape Cod. That's a surface low moving to the northeast, and very likely that's going to be an occlusion. And we haven't looked very much at the southeast U.S., but this is showing strong offshore flow. This is cold air spilling out across the southeast U.S. And as that air mass is pretty dry, we're seeing mostly fair weather and for the pilots VFR conditions. So let's go ahead and put it together using the GFS model at Tropical Tidbits. The Pacific Front, right up there north of Los Angeles, and looks like that extends all the way into northwestern Colorado and links up with that low pressure system in Kansas. Then up to the north, there's the polar air making its way southward. And let's see what happens over the next couple of days. Well, that polar air definitely shifts southward and merges up with that Pacific system. So by tomorrow, we're looking at a front barreling south through the Texas Panhandle and through Oklahoma. So there it is, all that cold air coming south and linked up with that Pacific system. Then running forward into the weekend, 516 decameter thicknesses come into Chicago, Indianapolis, and that's that cold air advection coming in from the north. Leading edge of the cold front from Houston, Atlanta, up to Washington, D.C., Friday morning. Warm front about like that, and it's just going to get progressively colder and colder as that polar air surges south. So here's what we're looking at for the weekend. It does look like the western fringe of that air mass does dam against the Rockies right there. So there will be some air mass recovery out west. But down there in Texas, out to the southeast U.S., lots of cold air. And I think the model is actually running faster with this cold air than it did yesterday. There's the progression of these patterns, another surge coming south around midweek. And this one appears to move into the western U.S. So this is going to lodge itself in the Great Basin area and possibly make its way into the Mojave Desert region. And then it's looking to me like around the 10th or 11th, the cold air is taking a track a little bit further south. It's kind of filtering down the east side of the Rockies. 
So this is going to be some very cold air for many places throughout the U.S., especially in the central states, and doesn't look like real, really any much reprieve through mid-month. I mean, look at that there. This could be the GFS bias since we're 250 hours out, but we saw yesterday looking at the hemispheric pattern, there should be plenty of cold air generation through possibly the 20th to the 22nd. So it's going to get interesting. So we'll take a look at that tomorrow and check things out. So I hope you enjoyed this edition of Forecast Lab, and we will see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.